challenges and successes, hardship and joy, pain and blessings, the dichotomies of life, right? We eagerly embrace successes, joys and blessings, yet we become frustrated when challenges, hardship and pain intersect our lives. But what if the tough times of life are just cleverly disguised opportunities to grow? Resilience, strength, wisdom, courage, and grit are grown when we embrace and choose to learn from those challenging times of life. I invite you to tune your ear to the lessons and insights my guests gained when they fought to overcome the tough times that intersected their lives. Consider how their strategies, mindsets, and habits equipped and empowered them to grow, even thrive, despite the challenges they faced. Welcome to the Challenges Won't Stop Me podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Brown. I'm honored you've chosen to listen to this episode. I believe you will be encouraged and inspired to seek to grow through your challenges. Let's keep moving forward. Today is Dr. Gayla Gorman. She is an acupuncturist, naturopath, and author of the book, What's Your Kryptonite? Manage the Toxic Stressors Threatening Your Superwoman Status. She is an advocate of getting to the root cause of your health issue and treating it naturally. Welcome to the show, Dr. Gayla. Melanie, thanks so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to our chat today. Well, I read your book and there is so much information in there. There were a couple of times you stepped on my toes, Uh oh! (laughs) but I'm glad you did. There are times when I just get a little complacent and I need somebody like yourself to say, you can't be doing that. Yeah. None of us live a perfectly healthy life. The reason why I wrote the book is because I want us to recognize when the ill effects are starting to accumulate. And when we notice the signs that things are starting to accumulate, it's pretty easy to just make some adjustments for a bit of time and you reduce the stress load, essentially. It's when we ignore the signs and things keep accumulating that a lot of times we hit that point of no return where it's going to be a big job to clean up the mess. We're all guilty of ignoring things. Yeah, it's not that bad. I'll just deal with that next month or whenever it does accumulate. What you said was sometimes it makes it twice as long, multiple times as long to get back to your health. And in that time period of getting back to your health, we would get frustrated and just, this isn't worth it. I just want to give up. Yeah. Tell us about why it's so important to target and address when our body is screaming out, help me, help me. One of the first questions I typically get asked is, how do you know? I tell people to watch for signs of accumulating issues. Symptoms start popping up with regularity. A symptom might look like a headache, or skin eruptions, digestive disturbance, aches and pains, and particularly in joints. What we don't really understand is the long-term damage that that's doing internally when we take that approach. We can't see all the deferred maintenance that has accumulated because we just have not given our bodies a break. You spend a good bit of time in your book talking about the importance of rest. Yeah. Your main message is about the importance of not ignoring, but dealing with our chronic stress. All of us deal with chronic stress. Our world spins at a ridiculous pace. All of us have about 70 balls up in the air trying Mm -hmm. to make sure that they're all being addressed. I love the part of your title about the kryptonite. You call it kryptonite, and I believe this is probably why. It's based Mm -hmm. on the DC Comics character Superman. And on his planet, Krypton, a green material emits 
poisonous radiation. It weakens and even kills Kryptonians, including Superman. Mm -hmm. I love that comparison that you have there about kryptonite and our chronic stress and how we have to deal with it. In your book, you wrote, stress is a pandemic. All of us now have an image of the word pandemic and yeah, what that and actually means, right? And yeah. how quickly it can just spiral. Let's start by discussing some of the chronic toxic stressors that might be kryptonite to all of us. One of the things I think that we generally give the least time and energy to understanding and probably the thing that is affecting us most is this energetic drain that's happening because our bodies are being bombarded with electromagnetic frequencies. The ways to offset that are to get the healthy radiation, essentially, from the sun, from the earth. I am fortunate to live close to the beach, so I walk barefoot on the beach. Our bodies just soak up the good electromagnetic frequencies from the earth. Like we were designed to plug into that frequency set and some of these artificial frequencies that have been developed to fuel our technologically dependent world just are incongruent with the signaling that our body runs on. That's one of the things that you really need to be mindful of. You'll notice if you're on the computer for an extended period of time in front of the blue screens, your eyes start feeling really tired. You may feel like you get a little dull headache. You might even notice that your digestion is affected. It definitely can affect your sleep. Anybody who is having disturbed sleep definitely needs to get the electronics out of the bedroom. But then there's also things like food sensitivities. I have something I call the fierce five, and that is dairy, gluten, yeast, sugar, and alcohol. We don't need to be perfect, but all of those things are known stressors for us. It's important to just, as much as you can, limit them. But then there's bacterial and chemical and viral and mycotoxins, which I have 12 categories of toxicity that I evaluate. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it sounds and, like there's just toxins coming at us from every direction. And that is 100% accurate. And why hoping to eliminate them is a ridiculous standard to hold yourself to. All you can really do is learn to manage them. And that's why awareness is so important. You need to feel what's going on in your body and recognize when you're getting a little overwhelmed. And then you got to know what it is that's causing the problem so you can step away from it. I wanted to make sure that my listeners were aware of all the things that are going on around us that are adding to our stress level, we can't address all of them. I agree with that. But there are some that we can, and I want to get to those. You wrote, we should view symptoms first as information. I love that idea because oftentimes we view symptoms as something that we just get upset about and frustrated with. We almost want to just block it out. It's bothering me. Just go away. Leave me alone. And you're saying, no, 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 you need to stop and look at it and realize that it's giving you information. And then you go on to say the symptoms are warning signs. When a symptom manifests, our bodies have reached their limit and can no longer manage without help. Tell me what you meant by that. Let's use seasonal allergies as something everybody can understand. The way people are dealing with it is very scary. If you look up the most common over-the-counter medications that people turn to, allergy relief medication is always in the top few. Those allergy relief medications, even if they're just the over-the-counter ones considered to be less strong, 
the way an allergy relief medication works is to essentially quiet the nerves that are being aggravated by the allergens, right? Over time, if you persist in deadening those nerves, don't be surprised when you've got aches and pains and related to nerve damage that nobody can unravel and figure out what's going on. When you have seasonal allergies, the environment is producing more aggravators. You've got to make sure that anything that's optional, you are reducing. If your diet's a little messy, you've been imbibing in the fierce five more often than you know you should, now's the time to be making sure that you are moving. You're getting a good 15 to 30 minutes of sunlight, minimizing your blue blocker disturbance, making sure that you're prioritizing sleep, making sure that you're drinking plenty of high quality water, all the things that you need to do to support your body. It's extra important when we have anything going on that is causing additional stress. Those are the things that we know to do, but and I'm just going to admit it, when I'm struggling with sinus issues, I just want comfort. Foods that I eat, which could potentially be making the work. situation worse, right? Yeah, making it worse. Yeah, exactly. If you could give us an example of a health issue that then the symptoms are saying you have more than just a seasonal allergy, you have something else. What kind of information would those symptoms be telling us? If a woman comes to me and they're not already on hormone replacement therapy or thyroid medication, they're dealing with some sort of digestive issue. (laughs) I can tell you with 90 plus percent certainty that if you reduce the toxic stress, all of those digestive issues will go away we introduce medication, all we're doing is further disturbing it in the hope of quieting the symptom that basically you're telling your body, just shut up. I don't care that you're struggling here. I just want you to shut up. We're talking about the toxins and part of what you do in your book and in your practice is you are about removing as much of the toxins as possible And you wrote, toxins must make an exit to restore vitality, health, and well-being. And we must manage the toxic stressors in our lives. There are some things that are out of our control that are toxins, but it's great to be made aware of the ones that we do have control over. And it's probably going to take a little bit of self-control and self-discipline to get rid of those toxins. When you've had patients that really stuck to it and made a commitment to get rid of the toxins that they had control over, what kind of outcomes did you see? The fascinating thing is that you can have pretty significant results fairly quickly. It's not uncommon for me to hear from a patient that I put on a protocol a week or two or three ago that will message me and say, is it possible that 80 to 90% of my symptoms are gone? (laughs) Wow. I say absolutely. But what they miss sometimes is that they think because we cleared out that first layer and the symptoms are like so much better, they think they're done. And I know that all we did was we basically reduced the stress on the body to the point where the body can now kind of manage it, right? So now the symptoms aren't popping up everywhere, but we don't want to let our foot off the gas essentially because we've got several more layers that we need to peel back. So that we really free up some resources that so that your body can now manage it on its own again. Too many people have been diagnosed with cancer 
And when that happens, whether it's cancer or any other severe disease, literally you have no choice but to hit the pause button. Everything you were doing gets set aside and you deal with the dire emergency, essentially. So I'll give you an example from my life. My husband and I have not been diagnosed with celiac disease, but in January, we decided that we wanted to try to go gluten-free just because my acupuncturist had said, hey, Mel, you would benefit from getting rid of the gluten. And I'll be honest, Dr. Gala, I love my bread. Yeah, I hear you. (laughs) I ignored her for quite a while because I thought it can't be that bad. But she mentioned it every time I went to an appointment. In December, my husband and I were talking about it and he said, let's just try it. We'll do it together and let's just try it. It'll help both of us. And Mm -hmm. I said, okay, if you're going to do this with me, I think maybe It's much easier if like everybody under your roof is doing the same thing for sure. Yes. And so when you go grocery shopping, you're both looking for the gluten-free options. They've really done a great job. There are many that are good. We have experienced this less just like bloating feeling. Mm -hmm. I just feel lighter. My stomach just doesn't feel tight. I have lived with that for many years, not even realizing that it was caused by gluten. What it tells you is what your body was managing before you got that out of your system and allowed the healing to happen. You practice this new approach for long enough where the healing happened. So now your body really reacts. It was reacting before, but there was so much damage and so much noise going on that you would never have been able to pinpoint that that was the problem. This has probably been 10 or 15 years ago. My chiropractor suggested that a lot of my sinus issues were related to dairy. Mm -hmm. I was drinking a glass of milk every morning with my breakfast. I listened to her and I have not gone back since. It's significantly reduced the inflammation that goes along with sinuses. Are there other similar things that you could mention that maybe the listeners would say, oh, I didn't realize that was causing my body to feel this way? Let me just share a couple things that I usually point out in relation to dairy and to gluten. There's a reason why yeast is number three in my fierce five. And it's because when you adopt a gluten-free diet, a lot of times people turn to gluten-free alternative breads and baked goods, and they put two to three times the yeast in those baked goods to compensate for the gluten that normally makes it fluffy. If you want an occasional piece of bread that's gluten-free, that's not going to hurt you most likely, but you definitely do not want to swap out your gluten laden stuff with stuff with three times the yeast, because now you'll have bloating, but it'll be from something else. And the problem is it doesn't just happen overnight. It takes a long time for it to accumulate. So you never Mm -hmm. like put two and two together. The other thing too, with dairy, that's really interesting is that If you completely clean dairy out of your system and then you reintroduce dairy in some sort, you're going to get away with that one day, two days. By the third day, it's going to have overwhelmed your immune system. Again, you don't put two and two together because you got away with it on day one Mm -hmm. and kind of got away with it on day two. And it isn't until day three that you start to see the symptoms and you think, well, it couldn't possibly be the dairy because I've eaten the dairy for three days in a row. It hasn't bothered me. Yeah. I encourage them to eliminate a lot of these different things simultaneously so that then when you do reintroduce them, you notice the effects. When we put two and two together and it's obvious that that thing is causing this problem, it's a lot easier to give it up, right? I want to go into what you call your molt method. You wrote in your book, In Nature, Molting Happens 
when it's time for growth and change, and I am about growth and change, that's part of our life. That's part of the challenges that we have that we can grow from them. And if you've got toxic stressors in your life and they're causing you problems, disease, whatever, it is time for growth and change. Right. I love that. In your book, you wrote, I believe molting is what's called for in a world where people wear their stress like a badge of honor. Oh, girl, you nailed that one. Yeah. Talk about the molt method, what it means, and then talk about each part and how that helps a person shed chronic stress and anxiety. Molt is an acronym. M is for mindset. O is for order. L is for lifestyle. And T is for toxins. Stress shows up in lots of different ways, and we need an appropriate approach that addresses it in whatever way it's showing up. We always want to start with mindset and developing awareness to help shift our mindset. The most important thing that I talk to people about there is it isn't just about thinking positive. The easiest way to understand order is with a concept called open loops. Open loops are essentially every little undone thing in our world has a little bit of our mind share. We use tools and techniques to help wrestle all those little things into a process that allows them to be closed, even if it's just temporarily. So for example, if we have a lot of little things that are half done, rather than having those in our view, we need to somehow capture them and get them filed away. Marie Kondo yes, has sold a gazillion million books, right? So this is obviously a big problem, clutter and, and all the ways it shows up in our world. Lifestyle is diet, movement. I want people to eat a nutrient-dense, normal diet that is satisfying for them. Movement is also part of lifestyle. We always start with just 30 minutes a day of movement of some sort. Walking is one of the best forms of exercise. And if you can walk outside and get sunlight in your eyeballs, that's the absolute best thing you can do. And then if you are one of those people who just needs more strenuous activity, you can certainly add from there without going overboard. Because if you go overboard, then you will cause further adrenal fatigue. Toxins are the hardest to address because there are so many sources. I think it's fascinating. It is addressing all the different areas and realizing how they're all interconnected, Mm -hmm. which for somebody who's really in a dire situation, it would probably feel overwhelming. It's going to take a whole lot of time because your body is going to want to rest for a lengthy period of time. You can do it cooperatively or uncooperatively, right? Yeah. If you wait until you have the disease diagnosis and you're under medical care to try to arrest the emergency, getting through the emergency is not the healing process. You're just going to get through the emergency and then you're still going to have to do all this work anyway. In your book, you stress the importance of rest and deep sleep as the first line of defense. You wrote, without rest, there is no repair. Talk about how rest and deep sleep release the buildup of toxins in our body. It sounds so simple, but I know it's not. Almost every woman that comes to me is dealing with disturbed sleep. One of the things that this toxicity that's built up, it causes our body to have a difficult time winding down so that sleep naturally happens. Sleep is a very natural process. Anything that you have to do to try to force your body into sleep, and that includes extra melatonin, that is interrupting your body's natural process and altering the hormonal balance that is so critical, especially for women. 
from about 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., our body is hardwired to do the detox and cleanup. Basically, it's the gallbladder, liver, lung, and large intestine that gets a little bit of love throughout the night. But if we have eaten too late, if we have had too much caffeine that's got our system jacked up, if we have a lot of toxicity that has our system on overdrive, then the normal amount of detoxing that would just normally happen overnight, there's no excess resources to do that. Your body at night is trying to figure out what in the heck it's going to deal with when it's got a to-do list that is 10 times longer than it's got time to deal with it. And then if we aren't really wound down and ready for bed so that by 11-ish, we're cooperating with our body to get good sleep, then now you've even cut it short. You can't make that time up. Imagine how you feel when you fly across the world and you have to adjust more than a couple of time zones. Essentially, that's what's happening to your body every night when you're not sleeping from 11 p.m. till at least 5 or 6 in the morning. You said your body needs time to wind down so that it can start doing its job at 11 Mm o'clock. What do you suggest to help your body wind down? Things to do and things not to do. Make sure that you are not consuming anything other than water, maybe herbal tea after 6 p.m. You're not getting really sound sleep if your body's still trying to digest. And then by about 8 p.m., you want to get off the devices, the blue screens. I would encourage you to turn the TV off by nine o'clock and read. You definitely do not want a TV in the bedroom. That is absolute contraband for a lot of reasons. (laughs) I love reading at night. I don't like reading on a device. I like a book in my hand. So I'm glad to hear that that's one of the things that you recommend. Yeah. Are there other things that help slow our brain down, help get all of that out of our heads? Because I know I struggle with thinking about all the things that I need to do the following day. I have gone to writing things down that I know I need to address the next day so that at least it gets out of my head or so I think it does. What other things can help those who are listening just get our brain to just relax so that our body can do what it needs to do? One of the tools that I use is something I call a productivity planner. You do a summary of your day, use an appreciation practice, and then you plan what your main things are that you're going to deal with the next day. The other thing too that can be really helpful is intentionally producing oxytocin. Pets are a great way to produce oxytocin. If you don't have pets, Try to read something that just makes you feel really good, making your heart warm, and that will really help as well. Those are great suggestions. I appreciate that. I wanted to share your website. It is drgala.com. There is a toxic stress quiz on the tab that is kryptonite-resources, and I took your quiz. Yeah. I'm going to share my score and be very vulnerable here on the podcast and let all my listeners hear what my score means. (laughs) Okay. My score was a 14. That's pretty low from the little bit of discussion that we've had that you do a lot of things to mitigate your stress. Sounds like it's working. Good job. You also have a YouTube channel. It is Dr. Gayla Gorman. Dr. Gala, this has been fantastic, and I am so thrilled that you are able to join us today. Thank you so much. Thanks again for having me, Melanie. It was delightful chatting with you today. <laughs>